All right, welcome back, everyone, to another edition of This Is D-SPAN, the podcast. Reoccurring guest Mike Shaw is back, and we got new guest, uh, assistant basketball coach from Wisconsin Platteville, Ryan Rayfield, good friend of mine as well, is on the pod. How are we doing today, gentlemen? Oh, we're we're great. We're we've been doing nothing for eight weeks. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what is doing this well. thing? What is this thing doing with well. this train? You're building some train once in a while. You'll have this train. I'm talking to Shaw. Your train going around. Oh. This- <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm a I, a model train enthusiast. It's a pretty heartbreaking clientele. Uh, I'm like with usually when you walk into a train store, it's me and a bunch of like 80 year old guys. <laughs> but I've been so bored. I've just been like I've never done so many puzzles in my life. Uh, watching movies, reading books. I mean, it's all things that you just don't have time to do. So I uh, sadly I'm 32 years old and I still play with model trains. Well, at least you can admit your problem. That's fine. I mean, yeah, yeah. I would. Yeah, it definitely gonna, is a problem. I'm not gonna lie. I went through my closet too over this like couple of weeks, and I have all my old wrestling figures in there. I, I just like, oh, maybe I'll set up a fake little pay per view with uh, wrestling figures. And then Jenny just shook her head. I said, "All right, no, no more of that." <laughs> uh, but the main podcast is, is we both wanted to kind of talk to Ryan. So Ryan, how do you want to? Uh, why don't we get to know you better? I know we know, but like how start from high school, your playing days, you know, through college and then your, your coaching tree and uh, kind of the path and how you made it to UW Platteville. And if you want to run through that. Yeah. So, so uh, obviously um, I graduated in 06 um, from Burlington Catholic central um, started on bar or started on varsity two years there um, ended up getting a scholarship to go down to Florida Southern um, my head coach was actually uh, Link Darner. He's a head basketball coach for UWGB now. And um, the guy that originally recruited me out of high school is Randall Herps, who's the associate head coach there. Uh, and I got to play a couple years overseas in Denmark. And then after that, uh, decided to get into coaching. And uh, my first coaching job was at a D2 school, Black Hill State University, um, out in Spearfish, South Dakota, kind of like the uh, – um, ends at end of the earth almost, uh, <laughs> kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but a beautiful area, great people, um, great college town. Um, they actually just uh tied uh Dixie State for the RMAC title this year, so that was in my first year was 2014 15. Then, um, decided to uh try the D1 thing out and was the ops guy at UW Green Bay the year we went to the NCAA tournament. I was 2015-16, had obviously two really good players and uh, carrying some love and Jordan Faust and then great uh, role guys like Kenny Lowe and Khalil Small and those guys. So um, it was, I mean, it was a great, uh, great experience being able to go to the big dance. You know, everybody's dream is to go to the big dance and go to March Madness, be a part of a team that might be, might upset a higher seed, but um, we kind of got thumped against uh, Texas A&M. I don't know if, you guys remember that one, but we had him down 20 to 12 and Kenny Lowe picked up a fifth foul, obviously a little shoot guy. And um, yeah, the kind of wheels kind of started falling off after that. Um, but then after that, uh, wanted to um, get more into a coaching role. Um, you know, with ops, there's a lot of restrictions or director of ops at the division one level. There's a lot of restrictions with what you can do um, both on the court and off the court and, things of that nature. So it's, um, you know, you're planning trips and um, planning meals and you're doing a lot of academic things, which, you know, obviously doesn't bother me, but at the same time, you don't get to coach. You don't get to have that impact in the student athlete's life. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was a good experience. And then I went to a division one Juco out in La Junta, Colorado. Uh, If you looked on a map, you would, it would not be on there. So about an hour uh, southeast of uh, Pueblo and about three hours southeast of Denver. So um, it's uh, on the, uh, obviously the southeast part of the state where um, we were, were, we won 20 games that year, coached uh, a kid that actually was at GB this year, um, Josh McNair, coached a kid that's uh, at Washington State or that was at Washington State this past year and then um, a kid that's actually going to be uh, doing his fifth year at Georgetown this year. His name's Chudier Bio. Um, so we'll 
we'll see how that that goes. And then just wanted to get closer to home and ended up at uh, UW Platteville, um, and been been there ever since the last three years. So uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of been everywhere. I was kind of jumping around year to year, kind of seeing what I wanted to do. And obviously, uh, being at UW Platteville, you get to see great basketball with you know, growing up in the state of Wisconsin, Chauzy, you know that, and Dan, you know that. Um, the WIAC is, you know, some of the best small college basketball in the country, you know. So. Yeah. The Harvard yeah. of the Midwest. That's what Platteville is. <laughs> yeah, I the think. Har- uh, the, the Harvard of the Midwest, exactly. Yeah, I think. So when you, when you got connected to these JUCOs, was that um, people that you coached through UWGB had those connections or how like the, like I know with like the one out in Colorado or did you kind of just cold call a few places that you kind of knew some people around or how does, how did that whole scenario work yeah. for you? Yeah. So um, actually the um, head coach out there was a student assistant when um, I'm sure you guys have, you guys have possibly heard the name Logan Flora. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's uh, the assistant coach at Ripon right now. Um, he was really, really good friends with uh, Brian Butch. He uh, was actually a GA for Don Meyer at Northern State. Oh, wow. And a person that was a student assistant for uh, Northern State actually took over as a head coach. And that was his first year being a head coach. He had been an assistant at Otero for eight years. And, uh, yeah, so he just said he was looking for an assistant and somebody that could bring in some different guys and things like that. And um, we were able to get some, get some, get some guys. So, but, yeah. Yeah, that's pre- that's pretty sweet that you uh, you know kind of picked up your stuff and just kind of went where I know that's you know coaches you know young coaches do that a lot where they, they they're not settled in you know like how you've been settled in for a few years now that's like kind of unheard of at your age just because you got to kind of jump around to find you know make all those connections but I think you you fit in pretty nice at Platteville and and Shaw you know I think he can say you know being an alumni and playing there like I think Platteville basketball is is back. I mean, think we can all oh, agree yeah. to that. <laughs> like, I'm a, I'm a, I've got, I mean, I've always been obsessed with small college basketball, but I follow Platteville. I watch every game online and it's like, you know, who the hell would do something like that? <laughs> but I follow division three <laughs> even closer than I do division one, just because, you know, when your alma mater is ranked in the top five, it makes it really fun. Um, and then, you know, going down to the NCAA tournament the last three years has just been really exciting. Um, and then that St. Thomas game, I was just going nuts. I've never sworn at a game in my life, but I was just giving it to the refs. But uh, it's just yeah. really exciting to be, you know, an, an alum when your program's rolling. It's like at any level, but Platteville, I mean, I'm just surprised at how good of guys you're getting uh, over the last three or four years. There's just some really good players, and it's leading to a lot of wins. Yeah. Yeah, I think the you know obviously the biggest thing with recruiting guys at the W in the WIAC and small college basketball. I mean, you, you want to try to find those borderline guys, whether you're at the Division two level and you want to try to find those drop down Division one guys or you know those drop down or those crossover NEIA guys. I mean, um, you know, to put a couple. I mean, the Carius kid that went to Monmouth, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he went from Northern Michigan, averaged 12, point, 12 points and six rebounds, seven rebounds a game. And then he went to Monmouth, and he was a all-region player, all-American. And then now he's uh, going to go try and play at Western Illinois for Jeter. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you can – it's just it, – it'll, it'll be interesting to see how he does. And then, obviously, you got guys that's like Ty Saban that's making – plenty of money playing overseas in Sweden and things like that. I mean, you got, you got really Griffin. good players everywhere. <laughs> that's, I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I think that's a, that's the biggest thing, you know, is there, there are players everywhere. It's just yep. a matter of what, what you make, you make the big time basically where you're at, you know, right. and you make the most of your situation. And, um, you know, a lot of our guys have done that since I've yeah. been here at least. Yeah. The talent level that you guys are getting is like you said, you're getting these guys that, could get a scholarship somewhere um, and then they end up going to Platteville and it's a lot of it has to do with you know the programs Platteville has um, it also has to do with you know winning always helps right when you get to the NCAA tournament every year kids want to flock to those programs so um, I just think it has a lot to do once you go to the NCAA tournament once it just becomes part of your program um, you know my first year I played for guard and the first six or seven years you know we never got to the tournament but the last three years 
you guys get to the tournament, kids are going to want to go to winning cultures. And I think that's back at Platteville after, you know, when we went to the tournament when I was a junior. Yeah. And I, obviously, you know, um, having obviously a really close friend like Bo Richter on that team and talking to him um, about your 09 team that was, I mean, really, really talented and you guys just got the unfortunate thing was you guys just ran into a, a, a really good team as well, or a really good region. Yep. Um, but I think, you know, the, the biggest thing for, for us is, is you got to recruit guys that want to be at Platteville or in, and guys that have an understanding of the level that we're trying to get to. I mean, you guys beat Bradley the one year, you know, the year after they went to the sweet 16. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy to think about. So. Yeah. Well, was, now that you've been to the tournament for three years in a row, is there, you know, you guys could be preseason top 10 next year. Do you plan to be at Platteville man. for a while longer? Are you looking, are you looking to apply to some head coaching opportunities eventually or? You know, um, it's funny because everybody keeps asking me that like the last I'm sure years they have. have really, really, have really, really asked me, you know, what are you, what are you planning on doing? What are you planning on doing? I, you know, I'm just enjoying um, every, every second that I have here. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, trying to keep something going it's I think it's easy to get somewhere but can you sustain that and like get to another level like listen we've made the NCAA tournament that's that's great we won the yep. we won the the WIAC regular season we won the WIAC tournament cool awesome now can we get to the sweet 16 consistently and can we make the next jump to get to a final four and then whatever mm -hmm. happens happens like if you get to a final four man like no matter what level you're at like that's impressive to me Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's just, or and even the NCAA tournament, but like, it's always like you're wanting to search for more and, and things like everybody's always wanting to search for more. And I'm not right. saying I'm content, but I'm, I'm, I, I'm very comfortable where we're, where we're at right now with recruiting and with, um, right. you know, coach guard has been really, really great with me kind of letting, letting me take the reins of the recruiting stuff with, uh, you know, coach Sheevy and, um, and I think we have a, a great staff. You know, obviously, Coach Gar is the head guy, and then I'm this uh, head assistant, and then Coach Sheevy's there. He's done a really good job. And then Coach Stallion has been here since you were here, Shaw's a year senior yep. year. And then, uh, um, you know, we have – I think the other important things are we have great managers and, you know, great guys, that kids, that students that maybe aren't good enough to play for us, but they're good people and they want to be around basketball. So they're in the – quote unquote ops role or a manager. I mean, like Jonas Beaton, the kid that was a, I mean, he's a, I think he's a mechanical, he's a mechanical engineer major. And he was like our ops guy. So he's setting up all the meals. He's still doing all his coursework for mechanical engineering, you know? So I, I, mm -hmm. I just think it's, uh, I mean, it's all those other guys other than those, the three main, uh, like the two assistants and the head coach you know, that right. makes Platteville great. And then obviously the booster club and that gets you, yeah. lets you do all the things you want to do. Yeah. It's a fraternity. It really is. And it's the reason why I asked you that is because you're, you know, you're part of a winning culture and you've really, you know, brought the program back, but it's like, why would you leave like that to go to a, you know, maybe a D one program that hasn't won in the, you know, had a winning season in 20 years or, you know, a D three program or a D two program that doesn't have a culture for winning, but it's all about what's best for you and, I just think what you guys have been yeah. doing has been amazing because I, I've been obsessed, especially the last three seasons. Yeah. And, you know, obviously the number one thing for me, and I think which gives it a good balance at the division three level is like your family, man, your, your life outside of just basketball, mm -hmm. like the community. Like I was walking the other day, obviously you're supposed to have the social distancing thing going on. Yep. I'm walking down the street and uh, a guy that lives like, four doors down from me, but lives next to, um, my, my landlord, he, he pulls over, he, he goes, and it's this old guy. He goes, mm -hmm. are, are you the, are you the basketball coach? I go, uh, I'm an assistant. <laughs> he goes, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the guy was saying, uh, you know, uh, he was, he was, you, he had a basketball coach renting from him. He goes really, really good <laughs> year. I've, I've never seen the guy before in my life. <laughs> really? And it's a, a community. Yeah. It's like, Oh my God. Like, it really is get a small community. 
and people care yeah. about basketball. It's, it's pretty, pretty cool place. Yeah. And I think that's cool too. Like I remember playing some pickup ball there once on a random weekend we were down there and like the gym and your, you, where you guys play, like it is like a tight knit, you know, facility, but you can tell like when there's people in there, it's going to get loud too. I think, mm -hmm. I think that's a, a, a big, a big thing for you guys. Uh, kind of going into your day to day stuff. Um, you said uh, with recruiting now, how, how I always wondered how like, now you and your assistants, do you kind of divvy up the state and the, the region as a whole, or do you guys all kind of tackle everything at once and have a, like a master list? I always wondered how you guys kind of organize your recruiting trails. Yeah. You know, I think every, every program's differently. And I think they've attacked it differently than maybe like a coach Combs attacked it. Right. Um, recruiting when you played it here, Shazi, or, you know, whoever it may be, but we've done some things where, um, you know, we obviously go to, which is going to be tough now because we don't have AU tournaments. So we've evaluated in the spring. Obviously, we've evaluated throughout the 2019-2020 uh, the high school season and kind of added some names to the list of juniors. And then you always look at sophomores and things like that. There, so you're always looking and trying to evaluate the best you can. And then we, you know, look at our list and we say, hey, we're taking this guy, this guy. I'm taking this guy, this guy, this guy. Keegan, you're going to take this guy, this guy, this guy. Um, you know, maybe I may have, and it's, it's crazy because I may have a connection in um, to a kid from Illinois that Keegan may not have. So then I'll take that. Or Rob may have a connection to a kid in Illinois. So I think we do a really good job of sitting down and establishing who has that connection. But we take, uh, you know, whatever it may be, um, however many players it may be. And then, you know, Co we say, hey, coach, you got to call these guys this week. Um, you know, so – um, and we try to make sure, you know, coaches talk to them once a, once a week if we can, um, depending on who it is and, and things like that. So, but we're talking to them every week and it's different now with uh, obviously not being able to have AU. So you're going through, you know, you're still texting, emailing, things like that. Um, you know, now like a lot of people are FaceTiming a lot more and doing these Zoom calls and, and things like that. But like, I'm going to be honest with you, I think a very, very underrated one is like if you can if you can game a little bit like these dudes love gaming like that's all they're doing right <laughs> that's now great. right yeah yep. but like if you can hop on the sticks with these guys man and you can mm -hmm. you can kind of chop it up with them a little bit for maybe what if whatever it may be like your normal call maybe you know 15 to 20 minutes i think that that keeps them a little bit more engaged and kind of gives them some downtime to you know instead of you get that awkward silence sometimes with some kids right mm -hmm. you're probably more in their element doing that right so well, I think um, you, I think you I mean, hit it we've right. We talked about doing that. I think you hit it right on too. You know, I think when recruiting, I think we all kind of see it that it's not. It's it's the relationship with the coaching staff. I think that is such a biggest part. Like you look at it, something you know, obviously with me being Marquette fan, you look at a kid like Marcus Howard. Whatever opinion you got about him, the kid went from Arizona to Milwaukee. There's no reason why he would have – like, obviously he had such a close connection with one of the assistants and then with Coach Wolves. Like, that's what the building is. It's not – you know, you can sell your 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 facilities. You can sell the, the campus. I know that's all part of it. But I really think that – and I think maybe you can kind of chime in too that really those connections with the guys are, are really what makes, uh, you know, players want to, want to join your program. That's why I think kids are transferring so much nowadays is because they're making the, the most difficult decision of their life at 18 to date. And they, you know, they aren't looking at everything they need to. Cause I, I went to Platteville number one, cause of the coaching staff. I thought I would fit in there and it turned out to be a good fit for me. I think people are looking at programs for so many different reasons when I think the number one should be connected to the, the coaching staff. Yeah. And I think too, like with so much transfers and we can all talk about it. We've all coached at some level. Uh, mm -hmm. We've all coached at a high uh, high school level, you know, division one high school level in the state. Um, people just want things right away. And you can say that even with non-athletes, like if they're not seeing, you know, if people will not sit as a freshman or sophomore anymore if, or, or limited role, um, yeah, except right. for the ones that really, really get it. And that's just, you know, that's, you know, sometimes that's not the kid's fault. That's parents. That's, you know, their, your coaches or their, you know, their AU coaches or whatever. But I think that's, mm -hmm. I think we can all kind of agree on that. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree on that. I think the biggest thing too is the guys that are playing right away as freshmen are what? First round draft picks usually. Yep. 
you know, that are having an immediate impact. You're having the Zion Williamson's, you're having the Nico Mannings, you know, those yep. guys. Definitely for the power five. That yeah. are playing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then like a D3 kid comes in and says, you know, I want, I'm, I want to play. I want to be able to play right away. Like that's just not going to happen. You're playing against kids that are 20, 21, 22 years old. Some kids maybe 23. Right. Later down the line. Cause there's different rules with division three. Right. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of kids get lost in that. So it takes That's a special kid the, to understand. Right. That's why I love the division. Yeah, three levels, so I, Cause you're the best teams are all juniors and seniors. Typically sometimes a sophomore or freshman plays, yep. but you watch a team grow yeah. over four years. And that's why I think you guys are getting to the tournament consistently. Cause all your best players are, you know, juniors and seniors and they've, they've seen it. You know, at the Division One yeah. level, the culture at Duke is, you know, it's always going to be good, but you have these one-and-done kids that just are in and then they're gone. Um, yeah. And, but these other programs, they can't benefit from that. So when they don't get what they want, they usually transfer. Um, and I, I think I yeah. told Spanny about an article I read about a kid who played at Wichita State back around when we played Rayfield, a um, kid named yeah. Garrett Stutz. He was just talking yeah. about how just the loyalty, in, you know, in college basketball, especially at the Division One level, is – is gone now because kids, you know, as soon as they don't get playing time, they're just like, well, I can transfer. Cause that's, that's what the culture is now. And I, and at the division three level, I don't really think transfer is a big part of that level. I, I don't remember any kids from our league transferring other than um, Shane Manor. And that was it. Yeah. I think that's a big thing too, right? Like culture at the division two and division three level wins, mm -hmm. yes. you know? So like, it, it, and it takes a while to establish that if you're a new, if you're, in my opinion, if you're a, a, a first time head coach or you're a coach that's going to a higher level to establish that culture, I think that's very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And then like year three, year four, you, you should see it. You should probably see a little bit of improvement, but cause like at the end of the day, I mean, it's the same thing as, High, as high school right like when a kid comes mm -hmm. in like I don't know what they taught you what they taught you right at uh at Edgewood what Z uh, taught you but like mm -hmm. let's say they for taught, taught force in middle like now now we're maybe straight up and funnel into the baseline there's a big mm -hmm. difference you know now when you come into a new program you got you got 10 to 13 dudes that may be thinking that way mm -hmm. instead of just three to five or three to seven whatever yep. you're incoming class might be so but like it, and I think the really really good teams in my opinion I don't think you have to talk about your culture no after you're you know at all ever you should you should never talk about your culture like once you get to year three like you're good like this is what we are if you don't like it then and you you got to switch some things around mm -hmm. um I just don't I I think that's a uh, that's a big thing for me and I think we've have it we Jeff has done our Coach Gard's done a really, really good job of um, establishing that culture. Right. I agree. And I, I've been, you know, I follow a couple of those basketball, you know, Twitter guys that always are tweeting about um, transfers. And Jeff Goodman tweets between three to five times a day about kids transferring. And it's obviously yeah. it's always Division One guys, but you have to wonder, it's just going to continue to happen. Um and yeah. if you find the right place, it, it rarely do kids find the right place as a freshman because they didn't do their homework. Yeah. I mean, did they, Spanny, you, you might know this. Did, did they pass that rule of you don't have to sit out now? Uh, for the, for that one year, it's the, right? the, yeah, the official votes like May 20th, but the more I've sound that it's going to get voted down. Um, okay. I, even if it's a one-year thing, it sounds like it's more the NCAA not wanting to make those decisions on all those waivers, which I don't, I don't blame them. Like, why do you, like, you have to look so in depth into all these players' cases. Like there should be some real easy ones. Like I get, you have to move back home. Like, you have a really close family member that's sick or something like you see mm -hmm. that a lot. Totally understand. But there's so many of yeah. these things that go on, you know, I don't know exactly what the Joey Hauser thing was, but I know they put in a waiver to play this year. It's like, okay, everything that we've seen is he the, the housers didn't get along with the, with the program or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's no real reason that he shouldn't have to sit a year. I, I, it just got too messy in that point, but um, 
I can see why the NCAA yeah. was probably just say, you know, screw it almost. <laughs> Let's just let the, if they want to have a free for all, uh, it's just taking up too much of our time, but I don't think it should pass. And I don't, it, it's, that would be insane. You, you, I mean, I how don't many, think it'll hurt college basketball. No, though, and yeah. I, I, we're still going to follow the, the kids that play in college for a year and beyond that. Yeah. Um, and I'm still going to follow, yeah. you know, division three basketball as long as it's around. And we saw, and all three of us, you know, even, we also follow the high school game here in the state. We grew up yep. loving that. I mean, you know, like we love that's, I grew oh, up, yeah. I grew up reading the Wisconsin, like we were talking earlier, the Wisconsin basketball yearbook. When that came out, yep. that was, that was my main thing I read for a few months. Uh, we all went to, I mean, thousands of that high school games. That was the encyclopedia, man. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. thousands of high school games, we, you know, over the career, yeah. you know, all our dads would go to the games together and, you know, coaching and the refereeing with Mike's dad. And, you know, your dad mm-hmm. is a coach. My dad is, you know, a youth coach all the way up to high school. It just, we just grew up in that. And that's what. It's a that's very kind of, well connected <laughs> network of people. It really is. And it's funny, like all our dads are probably connected in some way, you know, or, or, or cross paths. Like my dad was yeah. telling me a sto- a funny story. Like we went on and, and we have this website. It's like newspapers.com. You can type in your name and it brings up everything of like all your old stuff. He sends me this really? article. Yeah. He sends me this article from what he played in. It was like, um, like a post, like, kind of like how Holy Cross works. Like you could put a team together and these things it was out in Sheboygan. And mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, I remember this game. It was, it was, you know, I was put on this team with some other college guys and they beat Sam Decker's uncle in the championship game, like the, his team, but their blessed best player was Wayne Tinkle, the head coach at Oregon state. Like he was playing in this tournament in Sheboygan. It's like, it's just so cool. All the, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the connections. And then like the Dean's was that the Dean's food classic back <laughs> in the day. Well, I told Mike, we got the good Dean food uh, classic <laughs> story with uh, Karan Butler. That guy might be pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was pretty good. Uh, I, kinda, <laughs> yeah. But I used to drive, up. we drove my dad, like my dad drove me out there to Sheboygan. You know, that's a good, decent hike from Oshkosh. And we sat there all day I, Saturday, you know, even though we knew Karan that, Butler. Know, even though we knew the <laughs> UWO coaching staff really well at the time, like we sat with them too, but it's like not many kids like that. were just watching that. And that's how I grew into a love of high school basketball. But um, one thing I want to ask you, and, and you yeah. can maybe uh, get your piece. And so when I talked to Shaw last time, we have kind of noticed when I was coaching high school two years ago. So I've been out, but it, there was notice of a lot of like division two offers to kids that were kind of a borderline kid. Like, and I know it still happens now, but what I've been seeing at least in the state is a lot of those borderline kids are starting to come back to the WIAC. Do you kind of yeah. see that trend going or some guys that have might have a scholarship money to somewhere else in the Midwest or, or further, but decide to stay in the WIAC. Have you kind of noticed that trend trickling back? Yeah. Yeah. So like my biggest thing is, um, you know, if you look at some of the guys that have transferred back, they do like maybe like one or two things fairly well, or like really, really good. Um, like maybe score the basketball, but then can they go down on the other end? You know, the Gilbert arenas deal, like of, you know, I got to outscore my guy. If I'm outscoring my guy, then I did my job. Like that whole deal. Like that's not <laughs> That's true. still my, like, that's still my in rec ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's true. Except that's I don't true. score at all probably anymore. Say the same thing. That's probably what I <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think that that's the biggest thing is like, you have a lot of guys that do some things very like at a high level and, and that are really special at what they do. Like you may have a guy that can really shoot it but can he go down on the other end and guard? So like when you get to the D2 level, like you got to play both sides. And I'm not saying at the D3 level, you, you don't have to do that because there are really talented kids that can play at the D2 level and maybe mm-hmm. play at the D1 level, you know, dependent. And like there's a slim, there's like a, a few, you know, but by the time they're seniors, they, they develop and grow their game and they get physically stronger and they're maybe late bloomers and things like that. But yeah, I see a lot more of that. Um, and, and I think that's uh you know, that's a good thing for our league. And I think that shows that the coaches in our league, at least, and, you know, maybe in the CCIW or the MIAC um, are doing a really, really good job of keeping those kids closer to home that may, may want to not go to the NSIC or to right. the GLVC or things like that. So, you know, they're recruiting the best players possible. And, right. There's a lot of, um, you know, at the end of the day, there's, there's, 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I think it, it, it shows that, you know, everybody's doing their due, due diligence and, and recruiting the best players possible. Mm -hmm. Best players for their programs. Right. Yeah. And, why and, and last, great coaches. This past like year, you yeah. said in the state, like you're not just the, we act like, I think we can all, you know, all the conferences in Wisconsin, there's top, you know, top notch coaches that a lot of those mm -hmm. guys could be, you know, high level assistants at a D one program, if not coaching a small, you know, it just, I think people don't realize that that aren't a part of the basketball community or in depth, like a lot of us uh, junkies are. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. A lot of kids are going to the WIAC yeah. or. I think a lot know, of it too. Ripping. Like if you're. A... Go ahead, Rafer. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think it's all, yeah, it's, it's all about your, um, you know, finding your niche, like as a player and as a coach, like, what is it? And I think that was really. Uh oh, we lose them. Uh oh. <laughs> Plat Platteville Internet. Yeah, <laughs> it's Century Tell down there. I think <laughs> it's definitely not high speed. It's like dial up. <laughs> good thing. Good oh, thing. We're I think, uh, and I, I, what like we talked about last time, you know, the the state league i mean it's always going to be good the WIAC, but also these other conferences are good too but like you and i said the last this past year i've seen a lot of kids that probably could go scholarship are playing in the WIAC. and i thought i played with a lot of kids that should have gotten a scholarship like um, i thought dj marsh at at um, uw oshkosh was as athletic as you could possibly you know see in the oh WIAC. i got kicked <laughs> that's got right kicked. It's at Platteville Internet. Yeah. It's not. We're, don't worry. We're not yeah, on a I professional know. platform here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, I mean, kind of going yeah. like you said, going going on with the with the D two to D three connection. I just think that I, it just seems, and I know it's more of the Wisconsin State kids too. But it just seems like it's kind of shifting back to to right. when when we were kind of in college where we kind of knew better. <laughs> it just seemed like those kid those kids were making better not saying right or wrong, but just said, all right, we're staying in state. We know that this is the top league. Uh, we know that this is a, a, you know, a potential tournament team. We know the communities are tight knit, you know, mm -hmm. a lot. and I, I, it's, it's kind of a no brainer for some guys too. Yeah. That's why the league has always been so good too, because uh, you know, there's only four division one schools in Wisconsin and then there's only one division two school. So if you're a, if you want to stay home and you're not going to play for Marquette or the Badgers who recruit, you know, nationally and sometimes internationally, the best, the next best league is probably going to be the WIAC. I mean, yeah. that's pretty yeah, much how I look at it. And, you know, I was, I was happy to play in that league for four years. And, you know, when I played in closed gym with, with, you know, coach Rayfield, it's funny because the guys are like, Oh geez, you played in the WIAC. And I go, well, yeah, I mean, I, I played in the league. I didn't, really do much but you know it was it, it's a they they look at it like it's a you know a big you know a better league and you know that's a respect for that conference but those yeah. guys in the midwest conference and the knack i mean they can all a lot of these guys can just score the hell out of the basketball but i think the big thing too is like growing up in the state like you know you you know about state basketball like you said mm -hmm. earlier like the in the yearbook and things like that. Like think about how many games your, your dad ref Shazi, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds, and then obviously hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, not just in your, obviously your dad played at Carroll. So they were part of the MWC at one time and there's the CCIW originally, and now they're back yeah. in the CCIW. So like that gives you an interest level, right. Of, yep. of what, what that is, what that's about. And, Mm -hmm. My dad um, like played obviously. against Sigma in college at Wesleyan <laughs> for four yeah. years. They were the same age. And they were yeah. in the CCIW up until I think, God, I think like early 80s maybe. And then they went to the MWC. Uh -huh. And then when my dad found out Carol was going back to the CCIW, he was like, uh-oh, <laughs> this should be fun. Because yeah. that league is, is phenomenal as well. Because they get a lot of yeah. really good kids from Chicago. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So how are you still staying, you know, with the recruiting is kind of e easy, I guess. Yeah. Or how are you staying connected with your own guys, the returning guys? How do you yeah. make sure that they stay up on their regiment yeah. of skills and, and, and lifting and, and all that right. stuff? Because they're still in school right now, Ryan, right? I mean, they yeah, have, they've yeah. had to. <laughs> yeah, so they got another, like, two two weeks, another 16, 
16, 17 days mm -hmm. um, left on, on their uh, plate. So they're, um, we try to follow up with them. Um, I text them, you know, try to text them at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, you know, different mm -hmm. guys, depending on who it is. And um, we've had a couple Zoom sessions with them. Um, just, you know, obviously they all have to be voluntary. So um, that's the biggest deal. And, you know, as far as like basketball specific stuff, we technically can't do anything. So yeah. we don't. So obviously you got to follow the rules and things like that. Yep. Um, you know, strength conditioning, um, you know, that's a different story. Um, we can send them home with like a workout plan and say, hey, you can voluntarily do this, um, which a lot of people do. And so it, it's just one of those things where I think it takes a, it's a, it's a culture thing, right? Like we talked about. I think that's the biggest thing. And, you know, we have a lot of guys that are returning. We just lose um, Carter Volker from the guys that play consistently. And then obviously Tanner Huzak and Tim Bessinia. Um, But, you know, it's just one of those things that I think it, it, that's where we're talking about culture. And that really kicks in and comes into play for, for everything. Yep. So, and they, they're doing different comp They're doing different competitions, like a push up competition, whether it be a sit up competition, whether it be a, run deal you know i think somebody did like 500 i think rainy did like 500 push-ups one day <laughs> just like that sounds he, like he, Shaw's workouts <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah he said he couldn't he said he couldn't move his arms the one the, the day after but i was like that well that that sounds about right but yeah that's cool yeah, I'm, 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 go, I'm a little ahead, oh i was just gonna say that you know building on top of that with how much our lives are changing and you know even just sports in general because our lives you know, Ryan, you coach basketball for a living. You know, I, I just think that will, will schools be able to bounce back from, you know, the COVID-19 situation? It's kind of scary to think that, you know, a school down in Illinois closed because of it, uh, you know, after 174 yeah. years. So I'm wondering how schools are able to bounce back from this. And hopefully, you know, everyone's life doesn't change too much. But I think the way we do things is going to change a little bit. Yeah. You know, I think the biggest thing for – this COVID-19 deal is a lot of presidents, in my opinion, have to get on the same page. Like, I think it was a huge step in the right direction. The fact that Oregon um, is going back um, to school in the fall, mm -hmm. like they came out and said it. Um, I think Iowa is, Northern Iowa is. I think that's huge. So, like, can all the other schools, like, in that vicinity, whether it be a five hour radius or whatever it may be. I think you're going to see a lot more schools going back to, or schools going back into session in the fall. But, you know, like obviously people's safety is a huge thing, but at the end of the day, like our economy is like kind of shot. Right. So, I mean, what's going to happen if those like one school, like let's, let's say um, Oshkosh, La Crosse and Stevens Point go back to school, but Whitewater, Platteville and River Falls don't where are more kids right. going to go? They're going to want to have the experience of a, of, a, of a student, of a college student, not an online student. Right. You know, so you're going to, you may lose some quote unquote recruits that you originally thought were going to come, but aren't now. Um, you know, how do you expect a kid to, um, like a college basketball player, how do you, and let's say he's a senior, for example, Quentin Shields, really, really good player. How do you expect him to pay another you know, $15,000 to go to school here or right. whatever it may be, you know, yeah, that's, I mean, that's instead I of going to get a real job and, and, and things like that, or going to grad school, like he wants to go. That's why I brought it up. Cause I kind of been following about, you know, college athletics, not just at division three, but division one and division two as well as where, you know, who, who's to think that these schools won't even go back to school in the fall. I think they are. It's just every day you get a new update, something good happens or something bad happens. So you know, for all the all health of Division Three athletics and NCAA overall, I just hope that, you know, someday we get some good news where kids are like you said, you're going back to school this fall. We'll take all the necessary precautions we need to make sure kids are safe and that athletics are back and running. Because athletics are a big part of Division Three schools because that's they're paying tuition to go to school there. So if you lose all your athletes, you know, I think that puts a, a big hamper – on a lot of definitely the smaller division one schools. I mean, like a well, school yeah, like I mean, Ripon, yeah. they have 800 kids. I mean, I bet you over half of the kids that go there play, you know, some sport. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's admission. It's everything. It's affecting everything. 
so like, let's think about this, right? Like if you're in the Horizon League and you're a small D1, mm -hmm. imagine how many schools in the Horizon League are going to be shutting down and closing their doors if they don't have students in the, in the fall or right. in next year, if they, you know, if they go all the way into next year. Cause like at the end of the day, if you're, if they're expecting this spike, that's supposed to happen, how do you get kids to come back at, after that spike, like after that spike happens? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think too, I read division one was thinking even like, let's just start the season January 1st, cut out all the non-conference games. Well, I think we all know yep. that the big timers pay these small schools to, to play and especially, right. no, absolutely. especially, especially in football. I mean, when the Badgers play these cupcakes, they're paying them three hundred thousand dollars to come up, and that's paying for no, they're paying everybody. Them yeah, paying well, them yeah. Just, I mean, they're paying every, you know, and these doles. That's what's going back in the athletic department to pay for, you know, not only the, their football program, but it might trickle down into all the way down to the golf teams, to the tennis teams. Yep, uh, it's just you make a, a good point. It's just a huge. It's, difference and to me personally it's gonna affect all divisions right i love conference play just like anybody but i love the beginning non-conference yeah. you see a lot of games that yeah. you don't usually see the I marquette love the, wisconsin game is right. one of my favorite games every year and i mean I, that would suck if that game was no more and i just love the thanksgiving tournaments for those two weeks you know you can pop on espn and watch any turn like a, a fun tournament in some right. tropical place even though we're stuck here <laughs> it's just like it just right it's just i think awesome. we we all take for granted how much sports are part of our lives too, you know, cause yeah, I love NBA playoffs. I do watch a little bit of NBA during the season, but I mainly follow like Platteville and division three and division one basketball. But when there's nothing on, it really hits you and it hits you really quickly. Like right now I don't even turn on the TV cause I know I don't want to watch anything. Yeah, no, that's true. And <laughs> I think we, watch. And we've all dove into like Sunday nights now. Like it's in yeah, my phone. Yes. My phone goes off at 7.55, <laughs> get in front of the TV. And Jenny's like, what? What? The last dance? I said, <laughs> I'm in the bedroom. I'm watching it. Like, and even though we could watch it anytime, but that just gives, it feels like, mm -hmm. it feels like, oh, I got Sunday something, something to, look to look forward to. There's something to look, right. There's something to look forward to. Like when, like if Platteville, if Platteville, you know, won uh, against St. Thomas and they probably would have hosted again, but yep. remember Ryan, the whole tournament was canceled. You guys wouldn't even yeah. have played if you won. That to yeah. me, like as soon as I found out that the tournament was canceled, I go, God, I would have been sad either way if we won or lost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> the whole tournament was canceled. That, that's what drove, I went crazy for like two weeks. I thought I was going to have to be medicated because <laughs> the tournament started but it never finished like division two was bracketed division one never even was bracketed so like who knows who they were going to play division three yeah. had started so now these teams are like we don't even know if we would that's what that was the part that just drove me crazy i went i, I mean i'm fine now i got over it but i was pretty pissed about it for a few weeks <laughs> well same with the like you we know were talking I, with the high yeah. school the sectional semi has mm -hmm. happened and like yes. i was streaming games like texting you shazzy like watching stuff yep. and then I'm like, and then you could just see it, all it hit. coming. It you all could just kind of right see it though. Like, you could just kind of hear it though coming. Even even during that Thursday, you know, limited fans. It's like they're yep. gonna cancel this. And I, and then, I was gonna <laughs> go to the D three Final Four this year. Like my parents and I make, we're gonna make it an annual trip. We went last year when UW Oshkosh won yep. it. Uh, one of the main reasons we wanted to go is I wanted to go watch that Aston Francis kid in person. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. You got to get him Holy Cross. He's a gunner. <laughs> <laughs> He averaged, he, he, you know, I, I don't want to talk too much about him because I could have a whole podcast about him, but he had, he shot like 43% from the field. So like his field goal percentage was decent, but you'd think it'd be better with how many points he scored. There would be games where he'd shoot like 15 of 39 and then the rest of his team would shoot like four of seven. I remember Ryan, you guys played against him. What did he have? Fifty four against you guys? <laughs> yeah, fifty four or fifty six, something like that. Yeah, we couldn't stop yeah. him. I mean, he was yeah. he was he was impressive. I just yeah, wanted to go watch impressive. him at the final four, and uh, Wheaton had these T shirts that says Thunderstruck, and then uh, Aston Francis. I think he had like forty eight against UW Oshkosh, but he took forty shots. It was just like the yeah. ultimate gunner. I've never seen yeah. anything like it. He scored yeah. 1,100 points in one season. <laughs> yeah. Our, one of our student assistants, after we, you know, we got beat that game, he goes, mm -hmm. well, Aston Francis is averaging 52 against the WEAC right now because I think he had, <laughs> he had like 48 against Oshkosh the first time yep. they played him. Uh, and, I'm, and I look at him, I go, that's probably not the thing to say right now. 
Mm -hmm. He's just like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> UWO was, but, I mean, that year that they, you guys won the, I think, I can't remember if they won the conference that year, but. Yeah, they, they won the they, league that year and then we won the did. tournament. Yep. Yeah. And then the year before that, you know, you guys beat them twice and they went all the way to the national championship game. I mean, that just shows you how good our league is. But yeah. as I was saying, I just, I wanted to, I love going to the D3 Final Four. It's such a cool experience. I mean, tickets cost 10 bucks <laughs> to watch, you know, two high level games. And then we stuck around for the national championship game. So we were going to go this year and then it got freaking canceled. So that's why yeah. I was going to sign up for therapy, but I got over it. <laughs> Well, how would you like to be one of those, like, I'll keep this quick, short, but mm -hmm. how would you like to be John Hopkins, you know, you, you host, and then the opposing no team has all those, and nobody can go. Yep. They're like, yep, we're in didn't, front of a, a total of 12 people in the stands. Didn't you what? say that you watched one of those games in front of an empty yeah, gym in the Yeshiva, that see that, yeah, that Yeshiva, yeah, we, yeah, we, we, yes. we, we were watching Yeshiva play uh, – at like one o'clock because they had the whole mm -hmm. um their religion Empty. deal yeah and Empty they played gym, at one right? o'clock before everybody yeah that that was nuts i was like weren't they right, chanting like, defense defense yeah, yeah i felt <laughs> yeah. like i was in a juco gym all over again they were saying defense <laughs> defense the whole thing wasn't it just a phenomenal yelling. game too i heard I yeah. like imagine playing one of your best games of your life like i think the next round some kid from yeshiva had like the best Best game of his life, and he didn't even. No one was there. Yeah, the kid from California. He like he had like I think he may have had. Um, to be honest with you, I, I'm pretty sure he had like two D1 offers that really? he turned down. Yeah, but he wanted to go there for the the religion aspect of it all. I believe. So. Well, this would this would be a good question for both of you, and I don't know if I've ever actually asked Shaw this. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure we have, but for both you guys, both being you know involved with Platteville basketball, what is your favorite? gym besides Platteville to play at and you can include what's your favorite road trip since you guys are always all over the state of Wisconsin for your conference trips uh Shaw why don't oh, you start what your favorite what your favorite gym was and your favorite road trip whether it was a restaurant you guys ate at whether it was just well, I had a, a good boring story ride I could, <laughs> I could have a good story that I can relate to with Ryan and I because we were in it together um he and I played in this tournament called Nagani it was a tournament that was played a few weeks after the Holy Cross. <laughs> and Ryan played with one of his teammates who was from Gary, Indiana. Didn't you guys play for some Minnesota. travel company? I remember that. Wasn't it? Yeah, like Jay Crowder. Las Vegas Jay Crowder, Fun Jet. Baby. Yeah, Las Vegas Fun Jet. You guys, I remember that. We were all hanging out at that time. <laughs> so, so Rayfield and I, we take, we take five kids, one of his former teammates from Florida Southern. The, the, the two of us go up to Nagani with these five, you know, brothers from Gary, Indiana, and we go up, we go all the way, and we take third. But one of my favorite games ever, we played the 2 p.m. game on Friday. So we had to take a day off of work just to get up there. And Nagani's in the Eastern time zone, so we lose an hour on the way up there. Well, they let the middle school kids out of school early to come watch our game, and the gym <laughs> was packed with all middle school kids. It was like playing in like a, like a packed Wyack gym of like little kids screaming. And we ended up, you remember Brian, we beat Chris Boykins outlaws by like 20. I've never yeah. seen so many dunks in my life. RT, we had, Ryan got these, I don't know how he knew these guys, <laughs> but they were throwing just crazy alley-oops. I looked at Ryan and said, where the hell did you get these guys from? <laughs> it was just I, the seven, go, seven of us. It was one of the best weekends ever. Yeah. Yeah. I go, I go so Gary. Much fun. I, Gary. <laughs> The, I got him uh, the week before because we played in Holy Cross, mm -hmm. and I went down and played. I went down and played in um, uh, my buddies from Gary. Obviously, I went down and stayed with them, and I'm like, "Hey, you know, do we have any guys? You have any guys so we can go up and play in this tournament?" He, mm -hmm. I go, "We got a chance to win some money." Blah blah blah. This that and the next thing, and he's like, "You said money?" He go, I go, "I go, yeah." He goes, "Yeah, I got, I got guys." So <laughs> anyway. They were supposed to play with. Uh, remember the the team, the other team from the um, the Gary area that they were supposed to play with. Yep. And then they were all partying like during the dunk contest. Man, that was crazy. That was we won. Nuts. I think we won like six or seven games that weekend. It was just an absolute blast. But yeah. you know, in terms of like high, college, my, one of my favorite you know gyms to play in. I love playing at Point because their gym was just always packed. I mean, they would always 
you know, they'd have 2,500 people in there and it would be packed when, you know, warm up started. Um, yep. And then, you know, a great memory was when we beat Bradley. Uh, that was really cool going down to Peoria and winning at the, where they play the state tournament in Illinois. Um, but those are, I mean, those are some, just some fun memories, but the Nagani thing, that was just freaking just awesome. That was so much fun. Yeah. So we yeah. ended up having to, I mean, we, we got like, we went up there with no hotel res- reservations, nothing. Brian and I were driving all around <laughs> town trying to find rooms. Finally, we stay at this place called the American. It was just a dumb. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, we, I'd, I'd probably say, yeah, that, that place, man, that, that was an awesome, awesome gym. Like, you had the yes. stands, that was above. Yeah, have you ever you been had... up there, Dan? No, no, I can't say it. I'm going to definitely search it, though. That gym, <laughs> that gym, the gym, uh, the Memorial Gymnasium, uh, Nagani High School, is one of the most unique gyms ever. It's, there's no Wisconsin gyms that are like it. It's a really cool place. I felt like yeah. I've met all these guys at some point. We all went out together you, in Oshkosh. The I A swear division, we did. Yeah, we did. The A division up there, <laughs> it's just when you get the a division games it just gets packed in there yeah oh, yeah I, but now I, the tournament's no longer but I remember, I heard they wanted to bring it back i remember when you guys were rolling in that tournament circuit that was you know that was good times yeah ryan what do we win ryan we probably won like a thousand in cash we yeah it up. a thousand cash and divvied it up yeah that was we gave, a we gave him thirty seven fifty we gave him thirty seven fifty for the tax <laughs> on the room <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Was uh, Shaw was uh, was Superior still in the league when you played? Yeah, yeah. So that, 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 had that, a, that had to been a brutal bus ride. <laughs> oh, it was awful. Uh, my senior year we lost there. And my sophomore year we lost there. It was just awful. But, you know, now Superior is in the UMAC, so I think they are doing just fine. But, you know, when they, when I played against them, they had some really good players. I mean, Jake Smith. Uh, no, they did. I remember. Yeah, they, were real, they were they were one of those teams that you'd be like, oh, crap, we got to go play at Superior. They were really good. But now the league only has eight. But now every team doesn't have to make that trip up to Superior. That was just awful. Yeah. I definitely – that was probably my least favorite place to play. I was like playing in a beehive. They didn't really, yeah, I, I probably, didn't really have weird lighting up there too, if I yeah, remember. It was like, like playing it just in odd, a yellow. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah, no um, – I'd have to say – I'd probably say Point is probably my favorite gym to play in or to coach in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, I would say to play in for me, obviously we got to play – we got to go to Hinkle. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, we got to go to Mackey Arena. That was awesome. Now we got Thump, but, like, that was really, really <laughs> cool stuff. Um, you know, uh, I think Arkansas Tech, though, like – Tucker Coliseum, it's like 5,000. It's like a mini dome, or it's like a little Coliseum, obviously, but it's like 5,000 people, and those people are nuts. Yeah. And I mean, Isn't they're, that where your they're dad crazy. Played? Yeah, my dad yeah. and my pops played there, so that was kind of cool and unique to, to see that. And um, But I would say worst road trip I, I've ever been a part of probably um, was we were coming back from – I was at Black Hill State, we were coming back from Gunnison, Colorado, and this oh. is like an 11 hour bus ride, and it's freaking snowing like crazy. <laughs> we end up having to pull over in like Colorado Springs and, and uh, stay the night in Colorado Springs, and we couldn't get back till the following Sunday at like 8 p.m. Oh. So they had to close down the roads and everything. It was terrible. It was brutal. Yeah, I heard one, I'll never forget I heard one we, time. Oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I heard one time at Wayne State. I don't know if Lohoff was on the bus, but I think he had told me that when he was coaching at Wayne State that they were on like a really long bus trip. And, you know, in that NSIC league, you know, the Dakota teams are way the hell out there. They yeah, had like an 11 Mary, hour, man. Bus, right. They had like a, like an eight or a nine hour bus ride from somewhere and the hydraulics on the bus broke. So the bus was just like <laughs> shaking up and down for like eight hours. They said it was just like the most brutal bus ride ever. Yeah. No, I had to get out and, um, in Colorado Springs actually and put like the snowshoe like the the snow boots or whatever the snowshoes on the on the Mm -hmm. uh the deal I I think another one too this is taking it back to the Juco days we had to Mm -hmm. as an assistant you had to get your CDL and as a head coach they had to have their CDL so we're driving like a 30 passenger bus coming home from (laughs) Cheyenne Wyoming and I'm just like oh my god like we're gonna die and it's a snowstorm like we were supposed to stay the night and our you know, we won the game, thankfully, and our coach was like, we got to get out of here, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. We didn't get back till 3.30 in the morning, and 
I mean, we're going 30, we're going 35 miles an hour down. Uh, what is that? I think 75, something like that. So yeah. You sacrifice, I mean, you sacrifice a lot to coach and when you're a player on some of these trips that you go on. I mean, you're on the oh. bus, you're on the bus for like your whole career pretty much. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's not like you're flying out to all these places. No, <laughs> no you don't get the luxury at the Division One level. But it's fun when, you know, so much fun stuff happens on these road trips. That's the stuff yes. that I remember. And oh, that's why, yeah. like, that chemistry of your team is so important. Like, if you if everybody gets along, like, everybody doesn't have to be best friends, but if everybody has that camaraderie, that that's my favorite part of the team. And whether it's coaching or, or playing, right. like, that's, those are all the times you remember. Like, the games are all fun. We get that. They're right. all competitive. I you remember to, the wins. I talked to Aloha. But, I talked to Lohoff pretty much daily. I mean, did he retire yeah. officially from basketball? He was swaying back no, he, and forth. No, he's been well. He because he told me he now. he told me he was done. Like this was a couple of years ago, and then I I found out he came back to the North Alumni Tournament and tore it up. Like, yeah, he this plays last in year. it every year. Yeah, yeah. He, I so was there he's... this year to watch him. Okay, so I went down to Nashville last year, and this is when he started playing again. And I went down to like visit him for a weekend. So he plays on Thursday nights, and his first question he asks me is, he goes, have you ever played in an all-black league? And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, I'm the only white guy that plays in this league. So I was like, I don't believe you. <laughs> so we go to this we go to this, this gym, and it is, it's a church gym, so it's one of those like really small gyms. Those I get the in there, and I'm, <laughs> yeah, I look around, and I'm like, okay, he was right. I'm the only white guy in here, and Charlie. And it was really high level basketball. The guys are pressing and, you know, trapping and stuff. But yeah, he, he, he's been playing again. He hadn't played in like 10 years, but he's been playing again. But I go, Oh my God, he asked me if he's, if I've ever played in an all black league. And now that I've said, I was like, no, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, he's, there, I was know, some, yeah. there was some really good players though. I mean, cause you know, in Wisconsin, you kind of know who you're playing against in every league you're up up in you, you know, know and i was area. down there it was it was all new guys so it was kind of cool to, i'm like who the hell is that guy <laughs> um, i've never seen so many dunks in a church gym in my life that's awesome i'm glad he's playing again because i know like you said right after college he kind of put the retirement on right away he said i'm done yeah well you had a hernia yeah he had, yeah, he had some injuries so hopefully yeah, he, he listens to it birthday boy this week too. So, but he was launching. He had, I think he had like seven threes in the one game. I was I mean, at. He could always yeah. growing up. He could always just shoot it. He was so competitive and just, mm -hmm. he was such a good player. Um, you know, cause I saw him the whole way growing up and, and even mm -hmm. in high school and college, it's just uh, always wanted him on my team. Like, and yeah, uh, you, <laughs> that's true. That's for sure. <laughs> it sucked playing against him for four years. Yeah. A lot of the guys I talked to, every day or you know people I played basketball with so I think mm -hmm. it's more than just the the games and the horrible bus trips it, it goes a lot longer than that I mean even like Ryan I've known Ryan since we were you know sophomores in high school and now he's coaching at the program that I played for so the brotherhood just continues yeah it is yeah. Pre pretty sweet how that all works out and how we all got mm -hmm. to know each other um kind of closing things up with the with the NBA I know we kind of said uh what are your thoughts on that here with uh it sounds like they're trying to get something going here and whether it's a, a, a everybody into one place playing at a practice facility or a in I don't know what do you guys think about it do you think I mean for selfishly I want to see it but but it's like you're gonna play in front of nobody how much of that is I know they're professionals but it's just I don't know I, what are you guys thoughts on it did you see Pat McAfee and uh, AJ Hawk talking about it? No, I didn't. Well, I saw oh, him complaining about Aaron Rodgers. I'm about done with that. You got <laughs> you got you got you got you got to get on that thing, man. Uh, so they're talking about it, and they're basically saying, you know, what if they the NBA was talking about going to Disney, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I and, saw that like, as well. Staying at the resorts and 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 things like that, which like it could be done, but they're like, man, these professionals, they they want to go out, they want to have a good time, like. You know, it's basically like playing on that circuit after you get done playing college basketball, right? You play on that little circuit where there's like three or four tournaments. Listen, you're going out, you're you're playing that day or playing that night, and then you want to go out and have fun with your with your guys. You know, that's the uh, brotherhood, camaraderie of everything. And um, so they're saying, like, it, it would be hard to keep people in that closed space and, from, and people from going outside that closed space, you know, both – um, external people that aren't part of the NBA and you know things like that so I, yeah. I think I think it's really hard to to say hey this is what's going to happen and 
the amount of testing that's going to be done. I know David Stern, or I mean, not David Stern, Adam Silver wants to, uh, you know, get a, get a champion here, but um, I, I just don't, I just don't know if, if that's going to necessarily happen. Right. There's too much ambiguity in the news. There's too much unknown right now to say one yeah. way or another, because like right now, Wisconsin, like every day there's like, there's less deaths or there's less cases. And then the next day there's like a huge spike in cases. It's just a matter of when States are going to open again. I just don't see how they're going to be able to restart the season. And it'll be devastating for teams like the Bucks, who I thought had a real shot of winning it this year. But well, Giannis got a sign. That's so. Isn't that a positive? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah that's true. I mean, right, right. Mm-hmm. So he's going to sign that max deal. So it could help. But sorry, yeah. I don't have to go ahead. No, I just I, I don't know what to say because it's just so ambiguous because they have 17 games left. I think most teams have between like 16 and 18 games, and. You that usually takes probably what like two months or so to finish, or maybe a little bit less. So the playoffs wouldn't start till like you know the end of the summer and the fall, and then you run into next season when the season starts at the end of October. So there's a lot of, and then you know, you talk about the NFL draft, which was exciting. Who's to know if there's going to be an NFL season too? Yeah, yeah, I think that, say. I think the NFL is happening. I they they have not lingered once with what, what's been going on i mean they yeah. adapted to the draft but well, you they never were hear... lucky but they were lucky that they finished their season before this all started yeah, all I, other sports have been affected yeah i get i get that uh, it just seems like it's just a whole nother horse uh but for nba you know it's just one of those things too it's like okay well how much time do these guys need to play together before even playing like you got it you can't mm-hmm. just jump into the playoffs you can't you got to have right. some no, a couple of there's you got to have a couple games under their belt, and you also got to have at least, what, they, a week and a half I or think two they weeks try of five-on-five. Five. Probably try to finish the regular season somehow, but I have no idea how they would do it. And then if you're a professional athlete, don't you – I mean, people, they don't – they didn't work that hard to play in front of nobody. Exactly. You know? And, and, that's yeah, just, I, and like, the Bucks would have had such a good home court advantage. I know it, it turned out not last year, but I know they – I think they were a couple pieces away, you know, against Toronto, but – that, that makes a difference. I don't care what, if it's a professional to freaking high, uh, D5 high school, having yeah. that, having those fans and it's a momentum switch. Yeah, everybody, oh, yeah. we've all three of us have felt it, whether coaching, whether playing, it, it's there. And I just don't know yep. how. UW Fondy versus UW Waukesha. You got those hundred people in the gym going nuts. <laughs> That's the cool thing about this site. I typed my name and I had like six articles up in the Marshfield paper. Really? I'm going to have to split those up. <laughs> There was one too from Rich, Rich down by you, Richland County, the Roadrunners. Yep. That was an yep. awful bus trip. It was like a, <laughs> we, so not only did we have to play in the afternoon on a Saturday, we played the first game. So that means we had to sit through the whole. No, and I have a lot of friends that from that played on the women's team. We had to sit through the women's game. The women's game at halftime was like seventeen to nine after the first half of college. <laughs> Oh, that was brutal. Yeah, because all those schools now are – that's UW-Platteville Richland Center campus Center, now. Yeah, yeah. UW Oshkosh yeah. Fond du Lac now, but all those days. God, I wish I could have – I we got to do a no, whole other pod about the, the your JUCO stories because those are just fantastic. <laughs> My, I have some good you JUCO said, you stories. Said you, you said no, you'd get a scouting a report 10 minutes before the game. Yeah, we'd get the program. <laughs> Lanil Harris is playing? Wasn't he at UWM yeah. last semester? <laughs> oh, yeah, he was. Oh, well, I don't got him. I know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that one playing at yeah, uh, he was playing at MATC. Yeah, we played at yep. and their home court was at El Verno. Have you guys ever played in that gym? Yep. Women's College oh, El Verno. My God. That's where we played Saturday afternoon, one o'clock tip. Oh man, that was great. Seeing his name on there. I'm like, yeah. Actually we had a good game. We we only lost by a couple. I think we lost by a couple that game. But he was just like he just had signed on. Like that was probably his first game, probably didn't practice at all, but here you got a D1 caliber coming from, you know, a first team all city conference selection. Yes. That was fun. Well, I got stories. We should, we'll have to ramble about yeah. that. That'll be fun sometime. But if you guys uh, have anything else you want to end the pod with, otherwise uh, I thought this was no, really thanks fun. Thanks for having us. It was fun. We should do another one soon. I'm free till the end of the year. Like yeah. <laughs> the fireplace. No, we'll get, we'll get together in summer again and, and do some stories. Okay. And, and, but I, yeah, we should do a live one in person again. That'd be fun. Yeah. We'll do that in person. We'll all get together. But uh, Ryan, thanks for coming on and giving like the D2 hey. coaches perspective. And, you know, we've been good yeah, buddies no. here for coming up on 10 years, I think. So it's been a good time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you having me. Uh, Shazi, 
Stay yep, safe, man. You. Yep, you too. Good. Yeah. All right. See you All guys. Right, see you guys. Have a good rest of the day.